Folks, we try to make the show here educational as well as entertaining. And uh, that is why we have two very special guests here to teach us a new game that they've invented. And now, why, are, why is it special? Because they actually are the lineage of the very famous inventor, Dr. James Naismith, who invented the game of basketball. If you were here before, Dr. James, <laughs> James Naismith was on our show back in May, actually. You saw him there. Uh, he, he was so excited about doing the show, he told his uh, great grandkids about it. And here they are. So let's bring them out. Uh, Jimmy and Jason Naismith, the great grandsons of Dr. James Mason. Who's ready to play some goddamn basketball? Who's ready to play some basketball? <laughs> you boys ready? Suit up, ready to go? All right, here we go. I can't play basketball in jean shorts and sandals. God just damn it. FYI. My name's Jason Naismith. This is my brother, Jimmy Naismith. How are y'all? We're the great grandchildren of Dr. James Naismith. You guys know who that is? He's the inventor of the peach basketball game. He invented peach bucket ball. Now, how many of you knew that? Just by a show of hands. All right, well, who's Not heard even of Larry Bird? Bird? You know who Larry Bird is? There's no Larry Bird with no James Naismith. Exacto mondo. All right, so those of y'all who didn't know that, y'all here drinking your flirtinis over here, we're going to brush you up on some basketball history. Timeline, 1891. Great Grandpappy Naismith invents the great game of basketball. Yeah, give it up for me. Yeah, it's kind of important. Hello. 1949, basketball becomes a professional sport with the invention of the National Basketball Association. 1951, the Boston Celtics introduced the first African-American basketball player as the NBA's integrator. And that's okay. That's fine. That's okay. <laughs> Every, settle, it's fine. Let's settle down. There's nothing wrong with it. We're just saying. It's not what Grandpappy had in mind. Not what Grandpappy had in mind. He nailed those peach buckets to the barn door. That's not what he was thinking. They have all those weird shots where they do the lamps and they touch the rim. He always say, do not touch the goddamn, goddamn rim. rim. <laughs> 1974. After years of holding out, our home Texas High School Basketball League finally integrates. That same year, simultaneously, we were cut from our high school basketball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for clapping at our pain. 1976, Jason and I have our first alcoholic beverage. I had a Budweiser. I had a Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> they even had Mike's Hard Lemonade back then? I had the first one. Okay. <laughs> Goddamn. 1975 to 1985. I will be honest, I do not remember a goddamn thing. I don't remember anything. <laughs> Let's thank the good Lord they did not have Facebook mobile in our day. <laughs> 1985, a Texas County judge orders us into an alcohol rehabilitation program. And he also bars us from being within 50 feet of our own grandma. Long story. <laughs> 1991, Jason and I make our big comeback. Naismith brothers start touring the high schools around the United States teaching our advanced basketball techniques. Look alive. Look we'll out. <laughs> Including the first one, my patented dribbling move, the shake and bake, the shake and bake. You can't guard me with the shake and bake. I'll get past you every single time. It'll shake any defender out of their ankle support. Except for this ankle bracelet, which I'm required by law to wear at all times. <laughs> it's also been known to shake certain high school cheerleaders out of their bloomers. It's a panty dropper. <laughs> My patented move is called the two-hand push shot. You do a two-hand push shot, right? There is not a Caucasian defender in the league that can defend it. <laughs> Guaranteed to get past any white player. And approximately 97 to 98% of all the Asian players. With the exception <laughs> of Yao Ming. He is one tall Asian. Oh boy. So Can you imagine how many Yao Mings there be we had in Bomb Hiroshima? <laughs> Oh, it's too, too soon, soon for that too one. You got for, for Nagasaki. Which one did they bomb first? They went alphabetically, I believe. It was Hiroshima first, Nagasaki second. All right. Uh, we mastered everything there is to do in great game basketball. It's the only thing, one thing left to do. That is to follow in the great Naismith tradition and invent a sport of our own, which That's is what we came to share with you today. All right. So we're going to show you guys how to play table soda ball. All we need is two volunteers from the audience. Let's see here. Uh, how about you right here, pretty lady in the yellow? Oh, yes, you are adorable. Come on out what? here. And just to make it even, uh, how about pretty lady right here in front row? <laughs> pretty lady in the front we row. We like pretty ladies. Oh, you don't have, you're, you, you don't have a choice. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> now all you need to play is table right, soda ball. Thank you very much for coming. Thank
Thank you very much. What's your name, sweetheart? Nicole. Oh, that's Jessica. Her. All right, Jessica. <laughs> All you need to play Tata Soda Ball is approximately five cups, uh, a ping pong ball, and a non-alcoholic beverage, either a soda or a non-alcoholic beer. In our case, they gave us Coors Light. Uh, <laughs> Minorities are not yet allowed to play. It's just not a good idea. Just for now, let's just keep it simple. We'll keep it classy. All right. Uh, I'm just gonna pour this uh, soda in here. All right. All right. And, uh, all you here. gotta do there, just like with peach bucket ball. Can you hold that for me, sweetheart? Thank you. Uh, I'm just gonna try to get the ball in one of these cups. Look at that. I got one in, which means I take a sip of soda. That means you take a sip of soda. <laughs> Jason and Jimmy Naismith. My God. What happened? 